Hold on. I can't hear you. There we go. You got now it? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you see me? I could see you and I could hear you. Amazing. Amazing. Technology. What's go- I know, right? What's going on, man? I am kicking it in Florida. I got uh, I got a different view today, and it is. Um, Let's see it. Sick. Let's see it. So I got. I don't know if it's going to come in. Oh wow! Oh, that is beautiful. Yeah. So it's like a little. Um, is it like? Is that like a big lake, or is that the ocean, or what? Yeah. So it actually leads right out to the Atlantic, and it is. It's got. Two huge, beautiful bridges that are great for running. I just did them today, and they are really good for elevation because before they would have um, draw bridges, and now they are uh, just very steep, and it goes up, and it's some good climbing. It's about oh, yeah. it's about two fifty each climb, and it's not like gradual. It's like so oh, yeah. you know so early you're in, in the you're... morning. I, you're putting I in work. Up. You're pr- putting in work. You're putting in work early oh, on. Oh yeah, dude. My heart rate got up to 183 this morning, which I looked at my my watch when I was done, and I'm like, "What do you mean I got to rest for three days?" I'm like, three <laughs> days. I've never needed to rest for three days." I was like, "183." I'm like, "Dude, I haven't I haven't hit 183 in a while." So I must I was chugging along. Yeah, um, man. You just you good. just get in the zone. You get in that flow state, and you just feel good. You don't even yeah. forget all about it. It felt good. It felt yeah. good. That's it's great, man. Up. That's great. Well, yeah. well, listen, dude, I, I, I appreciate you coming on, taking your time to to do this just real quick as a quick rundown, since you're probably not familiar. This is, I wear this Hawaiian shirt for every podcast. This is my podcast uniform. It just gets me in the right, nice. right mind state. I just feel good. This is also in my closet, in my apartment, the sound acoustics and everything in here are perfect. So yeah. this is why I have, uh, this I was going to ask you if you're in your closet. This is silly yeah. goose studios. This is where I do every yeah. single podcast, but, uh, it, it works awesome. out. It yeah. works out. And I figured you'd appreciate it since you're in Florida right now. So I'm trying to get <laughs> exactly I'm trying to yes. get in the mood, right? Yeah. Um but uh but yeah, so this is gonna become this is gonna be a little bit of a shocker, I guess, to some of my audience. Cause typically the people that I have on here are um they're either uh, they're scientists, they're other people, they're their fitness coaches. Um they're they're in heavy into the the felt fitness and health space, basically. Um but for you like I, I, I saw you, um, on your mom's house, which is yeah. a podcast that's put on by, uh, Christina P and Tom Segura. And so I just, I love podcasts. I love all of those people. I love Tom and Christina both. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to let you kind of tell the, tell the backstory here, but, but just so everyone knows, yeah, I found Charles through that podcast and he had such a, um, you had such a good vibe. And this is this this podcast and everything. It's called the More the Fitness Podcast for a reason. It's because I don't want to just talk about calories and macronutrients and nutrition and and training variables and you know all that nitty-gritty sciencey stuff. I want to know about real people and about their stories and about just having a genuine conversation and and letting my audience learn a little bit from people like you who are positive. You're a healthy guy. You're an upbeat guy. Uh, you're a fit guy. Um, yeah. But first, I want to give people just real quick the rundown on how <laughs> I want to know, tell your version of how you got found out on your mom's house. And then like, how did you discover it? Like when was the first time you, you found out that they were like, Oh, this, this podcast, this huge podcast who has hundreds of thousands of subscribers and a huge yeah. audience, as you now know, uh, yeah. could you, could you elaborate a little bit on that for me? Yeah. So it, started many years ago so i so i live in new york city obviously this is obviously not new york city um but i live in new york city i've been completely against online dating and things like that and i literally just walk up to girls hey what's up or your vibe or you know i you know something situational so it's not weird if we're at starbucks i talk about the drink you know i'm I'm not like you know it's pretty natural but what i noticed was when i got girls numbers is that they wouldn't pick up calls and I'm really good on the phone. I'm in sales. So I was really like thinking away, like, how do I do this? And I suck at texting. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to do some, you know, I do some YouTube videos and things like that. And my buddy uh, said, Hey, listen, why don't you get on match? And I'm like, all right, I'll do match for a little bit. He goes, you can literally just bring it into a girl that is, 
your height that you want, you know, just parameters. I was right. like, oh, okay, you know, that's good. You know, New York City, you see a lot of people, but the girl that you're looking for might be 10 blocks away. You'll never see her in your life. So at least right. if she's on match, blah, blah, blah. So was going back and forth with a bunch of girls, uh, did the trial version, you know, probably got like four or five numbers from that one month. And this one girl, or actually all of them, I would send a video message. And the reason I did the video message is because I wanted to separate myself. I also wanted to say, hey, listen, uh, I'm a real person. I have a real job and things like that. So if you want to see the real video, uh, you know, you know, what's even funnier is that I was, I was, I was into this girl because my sister said she remembers this happened six years ago, by the way, my sister remembers that I went to her and I said, you know, um, totally into this girl. She's into fitness. She reads, she's personal development, you know, like my whole jam. And I don't know who it is yet. I have every text message. So this thing, you know, nothing happens. Right. Te six years later, <laughs> my buddy texts me and he goes, dude, you're, you're on your mom's house. I was like, first of all, I haven't talked to this guy in two years. I thought he was just, you know, giving me slack. And I'm like, you know, GFY, you know, go F yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he goes, no, 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 it's the name of a podcast. And, right. you know, we went back and forth. And I said, holy cow, like someone sent this in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, long story short, you know. A lot of people started following me, making fun of me, sliding into my DMs, commenting on my, all of my photos, sending me text messages. I was getting oh emails. My gosh. Yeah, I don't know up. any of this stuff. Real quick, just for background, for people who don't know your mom's house, basically, so they're two, they're two stand-up comedians and they, um, they do their own thing on the podcast, but then they also have videos that they find on the internet. And, and to put it simply, they make, they make fun of the people, but they not in like a, not in too bad of a way. And with you, it was just like, they, there were certain things, the way that you went about it, um, and everything. And I'll make sure I link the video in the description so people can get the full, <laughs> yeah. get, get, make sure you do that. They, they can get the full picture. They <laughs> can get the, the full picture stamp too because listen no know, I, I got hour. it yeah yeah, yeah no yeah. i got it i'll make sure that they have have all the uh uh the background but yeah clarity man, it, yeah, yeah and then yeah so okay continue on from there so they both start following me you know tom's got a million followers christina's got six hundred and fifty thousand followers on instagram and they they reply to one of my stories and christina says i love you tom says you know thanks for being a great sport and i thought they were just ribbing on me yeah. You know, the whole time I, you know, these are comedians. I, and it's not like I'm clueless. I've seen probably 20 comedy, like professional comedy shows, Ron White, you know, Bill sure. Burr, you know, big names. And, you know, <laughs> she said, do you want to be on the show? And I said, I'm just going to be 10 minutes of just getting grilled thinking it's just going to be, you know, just take care of Charles out to the cleaners. My buddy said, if anything, it's going to be funny, agree to it. And I was laughing because the first time it does kind of bother you that something you texted went public, then you're getting made fun of it. And it was six years ago. Nobody saw the context. And right. then I just said, screw it. Um, and then when I was on the show, that's when it really exploded. Oh. And then, you know, 10,000, actually like 12,000 people people started following me Dude, immediately you, you it's because you were such a good sport about it that's the thing that people so yeah they they played his his video message that he sent to this girl on match and w basically the, the way he went about it and again this was six years ago um you didn't you didn't really have it well thought out i guess or well structured or anything so you're just kind of like rambling on the phone totally just yeah. ad-libbing just just yeah. ad-libbing everything and so but then they kind of made brutal. fun of it and then they brought yeah. him actually on the show on a later episode and the way that you 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 were able to laugh at yourself, you were able to be a good sport, and then the the your mom's house community, which runs very deep, which is just oh, yeah. in, it's just insane how how heavily uh, supported these people are of your mom's house of Tom and Christina, and then oh, yeah. of of now you because you played into it, you played along with the joke, you didn't get defensive or anything like that because it could have. You were on the, on the, like, if you would have got really defensive, oh, and it, been it just would have been way worse. They would have just oh, yeah. hammered into you. I would have been wiped you. out. Yes. Yeah. But instead you yeah. played it up and then now, yeah, you gained over 
10,000 followers, uh, you yeah. know, you're putting out more stuff, but you've gotten, uh, you know, great, great attention. And now we're having, you're having this random conversation with some dude in his closet from Lexington, Kentucky, <laughs> right? This is, this is where, this is where we're at right now, but it's all yeah, part of, just, it's all part of the, uh, the plan. That's yeah. it, man. But yeah, yeah. then I, I saw that and I was like, you know what? Uh, and I was talking to my girlfriend cause we're both big fans and we, we both loved you. And I was like, how funny would it be if I had Charles on my podcast? I was like, cause he, yeah. he does, you do, you do fit, fit the mold, right? Cause this is yeah. more than fitness. And then you're, you're, you're into uh, triathlons. We talk about books on here often and just deeper thinking, decision-making uh, choices in life. Um, and so I was just like, yeah, I was like, what if I had Charles on the show? She was like, that would be amazing. I was like, I'm going to yeah. do it. I reached out. And then, so yeah, thank you, man, for, for, Yo, for being absolutely. here. For sure. Yeah. And, and it's funny too, because my, my whole thing, for the last 10 years, I've been literally in the personal development space. You know, I have a, a book right here. I, I took the cover off, but it's designing your life. And mm. I have this challenge during this, this quarantine time, even though I'm going back up to New York City on Wednesday, is to read 20 books in 30 days. And, um, you know, I'm two for this. I'm going to finish this today. And I've just been reading, I've probably read over a thousand books in the last 10 years, well over a thousand books in the last 10 years, hundreds of that, probably $150,000, $200,000 on personal development, like in yeah. person, uh, from the biggest names, Brian Tracy, Jack Can uh, Canfield, um, yeah, yeah. you know, success principles, he wrote sure. success principles, Brian Tracy, sales guy, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Tony, whatever, everyone, Tony. Grant sure. Cardone, everyone. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. It, uh, what so I wanted you, I, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So essentially I had this whole thing in my mind that people don't, they don't, if, if they're not good at something, they don't want to admit they're, they're, they're not good at it to even themselves. Mm. So essentially this whole time in, and I, and I have this whole game plan for 10 years when I build up my real estate company and, you know, I'm a successful triathlete, not successful, like I'm um, a pro and I'm getting paid for it, but at least, you know, I'm running good marathons and biking 112, you know, and, and 2.4 miles. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a good age grouper. That's what it's called an, an age grouper. Got it. And in other words, you've designed your life. And then I start talking about it, not for a 22 year old that's saying this, I'm a life coach. It's like, no, this is what I did. So honestly, for me, when this felt, you know, when this happened, I said, you know, like when, when people said, how'd you get positive? I'm like, it, it wasn't overnight. You know, how, how, how'd you be able to handle all this? And I'm like, this is 10 years in the making, you know, yeah. the, the person you see is hundreds of thousands is a of hundreds of thousands of dollars of coaches, yeah. you know, fifteen hundred dollars, yeah. fifteen hundred books. So um, good. It, I will. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to actually rewind that because I saw your your um, IGTV the other day, um, and it was it was talking about how 2009 was a big turning point for you. And so yeah. I I would love to I would love to kind of rewind a little bit and give people a little bit of the backstory. What were you doing pre 2009, and like how old were you roughly? We could even start before then, which is go for it. Go so, for it. So, uh, high school, college, I was not good at school. Uh, I I just didn't like authority. I look back at it now and that's what it came down to. I, I didn't like society telling me what to do. My teachers tell me what to do. My parents, what to do, you know, like I just wasn't, a good, I just did not handle rules and regulations and boundaries very well, which is clearly fine when you're in high school ish, you know, you're sort of a renegade, you're kind of, you know, breaking a couple of windows and smashing your head around. But once you graduate college, that's when it becomes real is that's when you, you know, all of your friends start getting jobs and $45,000, something that you never even knew that you could potentially make. Your buddy just got and he graduated 24 hours ago mm -hmm. and he's working at Goldman and you, you just start questioning your decisions. Yeah. So I, I literally for 23 years of my life did not read any books. I didn't literally did not finish one book in my life. I was not, you know, skating by, almost didn't graduate college, almost didn't graduate high school and things like that. And then I went into finance, 
did not like it because I would come in leading with my personality and that's not good in finance. You know, mm. people would say, Oh, how was your weekend? I'm like, Oh, it was great. I went to this barbecue, my brothers, it was fantastic. The food, the weather, yeah. I was telling some jokes and I would say, Oh, how was yours? And then they would sit there and be like, it was good. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, I don't know. And then I just started saying, what about my boss? Okay. Two years from now, can I be her? Two years from that is her boss and then her boss and then going up. And then I'm like, can I be Bob Grill, who was, you know, 50 years old? And I said, no. 2009, I volunteered to be laid off once Oppenheimer Funds, where I was working at the Trade Center in uh, New York City, they, they announced their first time they were going to have layoffs. And I was just like that. My You've, You volunteered. Boss, I volunteered and people were freaking out because you know, 2009, 8 million people don't have jobs. 4 million people are in foreclosure. You know, the world is literally ending. You know? Right. And I'm volunteering to be laid off. Didn't know what I was going to do. Got into real estate. Uh, so that was a pivotal point because it was the hardest time of my life because I get into an industry that caused everything. Yeah. And, and no one is doing anything. So I am literally scraping you know, I'm behind on my rent. I'm in debt. And, you say you were around 23 yeah. during this? Sorry to cut you off around yeah, 23. So I was, I graduated college later. You know, I enjoyed it so much. Uh, <laughs> right. 20 to 20, I, I was 24. So okay. I was 24 years old. Yeah. Cool. So it was literally 10 years ago. Yeah. Because I'm th 34 now. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And then so, so you, 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 and then from that point, so you volunteered to get laid off. What was, what were you, what were you thinking? Like, what was your, did you have some big elaborate plan or are you just like, I'm just going to wing this. Like, I'm just going to try and build it, build my own thing day by day. What was your, what was the next yeah, step you, in that? You know, what's funny too, is that they talk about it, you know, in this book and I'm not obviously plugging the book, but they, they <laughs> talk about it in there is that you got to try your first idea I forgot who they quoted, but they said, your first idea is never the best idea. And mm -hmm. I've, I, up until that point, I was a landscaper. I did door-to-door -door sales. I did marketing. I did uh, engineering. I was a caddy. I mowed lawns. I had an online business. In other words, I was a waiter at Olive Garden and, and a diner in Pennsylvania. You know, I, I've had 10 different industries. So it's not like, I was actually thinking about it today. I said, you know, the high school kids probably work at the movie theater. Then they work at their dad's place for college years. So they've only had two experiences. You know, mm -hmm. I had 10, mm -hmm. you know, I had sales, I had market, you know, like in other words, you know, what areas did I like real estate? I had no idea. None of the shows were on TV. So it was, it was, it was really finding my way in the dark but there was a pivotal moment because they had someone and, you know, regardless of what you say about Tony Robbins, you know, he might be woo woo and whatnot, but one of his sales guys came to our real estate company in 2009 and I'm a month in to real estate and I'm slot, you know, it's like I got ran over by a paver and yeah. I'm all over the road and I don't know what to do. You know, I got to write checks for rent and whatnot. And this guy comes in and he and he gives this really good presentation. He says, there's this guy, Tony Robbins, you should go see him. And that was the pivotal moment because it my whole mindset up until that point was very fixed. And, you know, Carol Dweck, she wrote a book called Mindset. I uh, mm -hmm. highly recommend you check that out. Mm -hmm. But essentially, it's fixed mindset, growth mindset. And right. up until that point, life was happening to me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, kind of like the last 10 years I was happening, making life happen for me. Kind of the victim and mentality. I, started, I was, it, it was, it wasn't as much victim as this is the road. I, I, I think it's determinism in philosophy or mm. I, I forgot the name of it where sure. you, you have a pre path and it's yes. already paved. So yeah. I said, well, my buddies are going to be at Goldman and PWC, which is, Price Waterhouse Coopers, mm -hmm. and they're going to be doing well. But me, I'm working at the diner. I'm graduating later. That's not for me, you Got know. It. So I, it wasn't really like the world sucks and I'm, you know, bad. And it was more like it's just not going to be for me. It's for other people. Got it. Kind of Got thing. It, it was yeah. like I wasn't entitled to it. Kind of like a know? reactive state instead of a proactive state. And hundred percent. That's it. In that's the. It. Oomph degree, like yeah. in this, in in like, 
the decibel place that's as far as pi goes. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. And then so so the the salesman came in, and then so did you did you attend a Tony Robbins seminar? Because I know that those things are are ridiculous. They're crazy. Yeah, and, they're and... they're off the charts. You know, I you know I came from a very you know cool background, and I walk into this thing, and you know the. Leading up to that, I actually was, I owed money and I couldn't even pay. So the, the event was in October and I couldn't even pay October's rent because I couldn't get the money that I paid towards this event. I couldn't get it back. And mm-hmm. I needed that to pay rent. And I Got called it. them. I was making up every story and they're like, you got to attend the event on day two, come to our desk and then um, we'll give you the full refund. I was like, I can't, I got to pay rent. Just give it to me and I'll, I'll attend something else in the future. They're like, no, you got it. And they insisted on it. So I intended the event all intentions on day two to go to the table, to get my refund, to pay rent. Right. And day one, they're, they're literally standing on their chairs, they're chanting. And I'm like, these guys are yoked up on something, you know, they're <laughs> off the rock, you know, yeah, like yeah. send in the police department. We got Rikers Island right here. They're crazy. Yeah. And then I'm way in the, literally the last row out of 5,000 people in this whole arena. And then, you know, you slowly get into it. You don't want to be the left out. They're high fiving, they're hugging. I'm like, I don't want to be that left out guy, you know, by day two. So I walk up to the to the table and they say, what are you here for? I'm like, I'm here for the refund. They're like, are you sure? What happened? Tell us about it. They give me a sheet. I got to sign it. And I literally, you know, I'm getting the chills thinking about it is I remember looking down at the table and just thinking how transformative the first day was mm. around the path I was going down and what he was talking about and how different of a mindset it was mm-hmm. that everything that happened was actually good. The reason you didn't read books, the reason that your buddies, it was to see that as, you know, an ideal person or the re you know, like all of these things that I used as a bad thing, use it as a good thing, you know, Mm. now start your life. It's not too late. You know, all these things, people got up and shared their stories and they had way worse stories than I had. So sure. Long story short, didn't end up signing it, but that was the pivotal moment that, I then ordered my first book. You know, I went back to my Amazon. Literally, my, I started in 2009. My my account and my first book was Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Dr. Susan Jeffers. Hmm. And uh, that changed everything. And then I went on this 10-year quest of just literally figuring out health, mentality, you know, and well, then obviously the business side. Well, I want to, I want to dive into it. Like what, so after, after that seminar is over and you, so you still have to, to pay rent and things is like, how, what came, what came after that? What did you decide to do? So you had this, you had this, uh, you know, the shift in your mindset, but then it's just like, did you, uh, were you able to come up with the money for rent? And then you decided to make a plan from there. I like, I like these little transitory details because sometimes people can skip over them, but I have a lot of listeners who are around that age, usually in the 20 to like 35 range. And they're trying, like they're in that transitory moment, especially right now with all the shit that's going on, you know, with the, uh, the economy and this, the virus and everything, people are looking for that next thing that they should do or try. Um, but they may need that little bit of motivation or idea or something like that. So what, what, what was the next step that you decided to do after you had all this motivation, uh, from this seminar? Yeah. So when you have some moment in life, it could be a sporting event or it could be one of these seminars, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. And you say, that's it. I'm going to change. And it could be, I'm going to stop drinking. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to start approaching girls because I'm sick and tired of being single. I'm going to get smarter because I can't fail out of school, whatever it is, or I'm in debt. I'm going to start saving. You know, there's, there's a pivotal moment in people's lives and they feel like it's the, it, in, in many times, not many times, but I would say in a small percentage of the time, it is a quantum leap. Mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. My buddy's dad, the doc, he had a stroke and his, and his son, God bless, was home and w- is a doctor, you know, like eight oh, years. Wow. He's an ER doctor. And he said, you're having a stroke. He's like, no, 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 I'm fine. He goes, no, we're putting you in the hospital. He was. And, they, and that was a pivotal moment. Now he's, he's been eating healthy. Mm. People don't want to get to that point. 
Okay. Yeah. So I saw that and I said, you know, that happened now. I've already been on a really good quest of, you know, what to eat, you mm. know, and mm-hmm. religiously between hydration and food consumption and working sure. out and mindset, you know, I track everything. Mm-hmm. But it was every someone will leave an inspirational moment, but not do anything in the moment. It feels good, but then they'll go back home and they'll wake up and they'll say tomorrow. Yes. And that so, sort of happened to me when I left that event, except it was, there was a fire of what could be. Mm. So essentially it wasn't like I, I was, I was putting up two plates on either end. You know, obviously yeah. I'm not the yeah. biggest guy. I'm a lean guy, no, you're but good, you're you know, good. it's not like, I then made a million dollars. I had the hottest right. girl, you know, yes. it, it, there's no, that doesn't happen. You mm-hmm. know, you'll read about it in the paper and say, man lost 60 pounds, but yeah. it wasn't, he's pissed off. He's hung over and he still went to the gym Yeah, or he's, he's tired and he's been going for two months and he sees progress and he wants to take a day off, but he still goes to the gym. That's not sexy. Right. And what's, but he, but in that, in that scenario, he saw what could be, because the mm. scale was telling them you are losing weight mm. or you are getting more confident or yeah. your belt size is not 40, it's 39. Right. So for me, when I attended it, I saw what could be. Yeah. And that was enough where I said, I want to go down that path. I didn't know where I was going. Yeah. And the book, so on this, you know, read 20 books in 30 days, the book that I read by Hal Elrod, which is Miracle Equation, I'll you know, I'll, mm. you know, I'll put this on my Instagram mm-hmm. and whatnot. But um, what he said, it's the Steve Jobs quote, which is you can't look forward and connect the dots, but everything makes sense. Looking back, it's the same thing is that in the book, it says, as long as you know the direction and as long as you have a compass, the map will happen. Right. You know, he brings up, you know, when Jefferson told Lewis and Clark to go west, mm. they knew where they're going. Yeah. They had the compass. Right. And they had the skills to survive, but they didn't have a map. And they and Jefferson said, make the map. And right. that's essentially what I did was I had to make the map. So I said, what's the most immediate thing? OK, mm. sales. I have no idea what I'm doing. So I read how to win friends and influence people. I said, oh, wow, yeah. uh, using someone's name is powerful. So mm. it was essentially each every two years I handled an area. So in the beginning, it was sales. Then I moved into marketing. Then I moved into health. And Mm -hmm. now I'm into wealth. So health was the last two years. And it was extremely transformative on the, um, (laughs) it was, it was amazing. Yeah. Because it's kind of, I would say out of anything, maybe sales is more immediate, Mm -hmm. but health is extremely immediate. Like yeah. you can tell your skin clears up within two weeks. It's not like you can now buy a house in two weeks. Right. Or, like if you learn wealth, sure. you know, it still takes time. Sure. But I would still say the most tra- transformative in my life is health mm-hmm. by far. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Once I, once I handled that because I had the worst, you know, Irish background, which is drinking and carbs and sure. meat sure. and uh, yeah. not sleeping. And, you know, it was brutal. The no, path I was going down. I understand. That's cool, man. That's that's really inspiring, and I think that that's um, going to help a lot of people. It sounds like it sounds like the Tony Robbins kind of gave you um, that belief, right? A belief in yourself. Cause like you said, before that you had somewhat of this fixed mindset, like, Oh, that's not for me. They're like, I'll leave that success stuff up to the other guys. And I'm just going to stay over here in my lane. But then yeah. you have the Tony Robbins seminar, exactly. you have this belief in yourself, like, Oh, like why, why can't that be me? Why can't I do that? And it's just like, you know, that you're here and then your goal is up here And what stands in between of that is, is work and also knowledge. And then you were, so you had the work ethic. Clearly you said you were a hustler. You had like 10, 10 different jobs. You were doing tons of different things. And then now you had that belief, which was that, that unlock of like, okay, I can do this, that it, that life is for me. Now I just have to put in the work to get there. And then that's where the, yeah, that's just kind of the same thing that happened is like, I had these questions in my head as a young kid. And whenever I started reading books was, which was whenever I was in college, that's whenever everything started clicking for me. Cause I was like, Oh, 
other people have the same problems that I've had? Oh, that's weird. And their answers are in these very conveniently well thought out organized books that are only 15 to $20. You know what I'm saying? It's like all of that yeah. information is available to me at my fingertips if I'm willing to read them and search for them and then apply them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's, that's transformative for people to hear. Um, so that's awesome. Man. I was, that's, that's great. Yeah, I was. And, and it's funny too, because, you know, if I was 20 something years old, whoop, sorry about that. <laughs> you know, if I was 20 something years old, I would, Ooh, it's, you have to have an ideal, you know, every sports player or anyone in entertainment and sports, I do consider entertainment, even though it is athletics, but it yeah. is a form of entertainment, say for us. I agree. But everyone says, you know, Tom Brady says Joe Namath. Uh, I'm sorry, not Joe Namath. Um, uh, what's his name? I forgot his name. Joe I'm Montana. San Francisco. Joe Montana. Joe Montana. Joe oh, you're Namath. good. Joe, yeah, Namath is, Joe, Joe Namath is great too. Yeah, I mean, Joe, Joe Namath. Namath. <laughs> Joe Namath was great from the Jets. Come on, dude. He was Broadway great, too. Joe. I yeah, know. man. Absolutely. Oh, man. But yeah, he's got a role model. So, exactly. Everyone, if you see something, you need to see something. Like, and not an idol where you mm. where you look up and you, you see Warship. it as this something that's unattainable. But right. this ideal, this yes. ideal figure. Yeah. And then from there, you say, how does that person do that? That, that, and ironically enough is when I, when I was going to the gym before it closed down is that I would meet this guy two years in and into the gym and the guy was the same weight. And, and I went up to him and, and this is after I was reading all these books on mm -hmm. obviously sedentary lifestyle, your food, caloric mm -hmm. intake, you know, sure. hydration, sleeping, everything affects your mental health. And that's very acidic. So I went up to him and I said, what are you doing that you are the same weight two years ago as you are right now? And you're here every day. And it's not like he leaves and he's not sweaty. Right. Sedentary lifestyle same eating habits. Mm -hmm. So I took that upon myself that said, yes, there's an ideal person I want to be. And mm -hmm. I said, what, what is, what did that person do? That's literally the number one question. If I meet a guy, he's got a beautiful wife, he's got the money, he's got a great family, which is what I want in the future is yeah. what did that guy do? And that's literally the question I ask. like, what do you do to be you? Mm -hmm. And then I also take the opposite is I look at this guy and I say, what did he do to to continue to be the same person two years later. Right. So right. he would say sedentary lifestyle, same food. So I said, okay, I have a standing desk. Okay. I got to make sure, you know, for me reaching step goals and run goals is fine because of my triathlon plan. Yeah. But I was sitting down. Mm -hmm. I wasn't stretching. Mm. I wasn't hydrating. Why is that important? You have a brand new piece of steak. You have one that's dried. The one mm -hmm. that's dried it gets injured. You pull it back. Your hammies get tight, you know, right. especially in running or biking. It's, it's very obvious. It's more stiff. You know? Exactly. But if you hydrate and you're pliable and you, so now I stretch every night and mm -hmm. I just do these basic exercises. I, you know, it's, it all comes together when you just start seeing other people doing it that are 10 years older, five years older, three years older, even the same age, like, what did you do wrong? And you don't mm -hmm. say it like that, but like, what do you do? And then what do you do? That's good. So yeah, it's everything. Yeah. And that's the map. The map right. comes into fruition mm -hmm. when you not only read it, but you actually see it in real life. Mm -hmm. Why is this? Why does this guy have no relationship? You know, all these successful people that I would read about, say Phil, uh, was it Phil Knight, Nike, yeah. uh, Shoe Dog, I think is the name of the book. Yes. Unbelievable book, great book. He didn't have the greatest relationship with his kids. You know, Ray Dalio, principals, a guy that has the largest head, hedge fund in the world, which is called Bridgewood Associates. Um, great book called Principles, Ray Dalio. But he didn't mm -hmm. have the greatest relationship with his kids. You know, one of them got on drugs. It's nothing against the guys, but I said, Okay, what did those guys do? They were too hard. They weren't there. You know, so right. do I want to be a billionaire like they are, or do I want to have my kids, you know, have their own sure. path and of not course. absorb my money? You know, so 
um, I take it on all those directions, you know, the billionaire yeah. or the athlete that, you know, so. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a constant practice, it's, right? It's a daily practice. Cause you're there's, I'm yeah. sure that there's some days where you, you don't want to do something or that you're not motivated to, to, to go for the run or to, to do whatever. And it's just, again, I think it's this constant practice, this daily practice of, of one seeing progress. Cause I think that's one of the most motivating things. I think it was even Tony Robbins that said like happiness is pro- progression. Basically it's like happiness is progress, like seeing progress over time. And that's how you, you build yeah. momentum. It's like, that's one of the things. Yeah. So I'm a registered dietitian and a, a fitness coach and the, some of the smallest, the, I don't know if you've read atomic habits, but by James clear, of course if you haven't. Yeah. It's Many great. Times. Yeah, it's great, yeah. right? So it's just like starting with that smallest thing, building up some momentum from there. It's like, that's huge in, in this type of practice. And then once they see that them checking off the box of, of accomplishing that, then they maybe lose a pound for the week or something. That's motivating. Mm-hmm. And then the snowball kind of builds from there. Um, so yeah, what 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 I guess the question would be, what are some things that are still motivating you to to continue doing these things, to continue to to, to strive for more And I want you to also touch on the, uh, how you said, okay, maybe I don't want to be a billionaire because I want to make sure that I have enough time to focus on my family, the things that I love, my kids, Mm -hmm. um, et cetera. Yeah. Do you care to just touch on that a little bit? Yeah. So I would say the people that I hear that are successful, the ones that are most vulnerable, you know, the the one thing that I, I wish that Tony Robbins would do is be vulnerable and be like, Listen, two years ago, he had a health scare where he almost died because he was having too much fish and mm. it, the mercury fucked up his insides. And literally, he had to get a ton drained from his body. He almost died. He almost had failure. kidney. It was either kidney or liver failure because right. he had too much mercury. Yeah. You got to let us know. You yeah. know, this only came out in like one interview. Like that vulnerability is – Mm. Why we look up to an athlete, the mm. Michael Jordan commercial, I missed 12,000 shots. Uh, you know, I, uh, you know, Babe Ruth that had more strikeouts, but he had the most home runs. That's why someone is um, not only real, but there's a lot of people, you know, the, the guy that I, I, I forgot, he, he came out with one big fitness program. And I, I don't think it was Jack LaLanne, but it was one of those fitness celebrity guys. But he said, of the time he doesn't feel like working out. And he said, the reason that he would actually work out is he said just 10 minutes. And that Mm. was before James clear and atomic habits. This was decades ago. Was it Greg by chance? Was it Greg Plitt? He used to be on muscle and fitness. uh, He was a really in shape, good looking dude. He actually, he actually passed away a few years, a few years ago. Um, because yeah, yeah, he was in some type of accident tracks, or something. Crazy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 He was doing some, some, something for a video that, that was unfortunate because that guy was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Greg looked was up to him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to, along those lines of what the, the one guy said about the uh-huh. 10 minutes is that I do that today. Mm-hmm. Just put on your socks. Yeah. Okay, tighten the shoes. Yeah. And the reason being is that I, you know, I, I don't know if you've ever swam, you know, consistently, but getting into a cold pool at 5 30 AM isn't the top of everyone's list. Right. So really I just say, just put your shit in your bag. Now walk yeah. to the gym, blah, blah, blah. So I would say that, you know, the successful people that my future, you know, talk about designing your life, the book that's right here is that mm-hmm. I, I feel that you know, he, he just talked about three lives. You have the exact path that you're on right now, which is the same job and everything else. Then the set, and you write out these paths, mm. the what ifs, the same path that you're on, the path that if you can combine a passion with your dream job, and then mm. your third, which is you have unlimited money and you can do whatever. Okay. Right. So I started thinking about that and I said, wow, that's actually a very interesting way to think about it. But I feel like that's the way that we should design our life, which is, Mm -hmm. okay, what's the top priority? So for me is that I could really mess up my kids if I'm a bad dad and I'm a bad spouse. You know, so I do want a wife that I don't, I'm not dating anyone, obviously, from the, you know, the videos that I've been putting off on my Instagram. But in the future, I'm 34. So in the future, within the next five years, six years, I want to meet somebody. So it's like, who do I know that has a great relationship? but they're lacking in fitness. So Mm. I literally say, okay, how would I design my schedule? Which is she's got to be into fitness. She's got to be a great loving mother because I'm going to be working and 
busting my ass, but right. I also do want to make a lot of fucking money. You know, yeah, of course. I don't know if we're allowed to curse on here. But yeah, absolutely, I dude. Already did. <laughs> absolutely, you're <laughs> good, man. You're good. Yeah, you know. Please do go for it. So the the wealth factor would be Grant Cardone, which is I buy up a bunch of investment properties that produce residual income, and the reason being is that I'm in a transactional lifestyle, which is I do a deal and I get paid, and then I have to do another deal, and then I get paid. Okay. Mm-hmm. There is no, I'm not, I, so for everyone that's on the thing, I'm in real estate. So if I yeah. sell a house or help a buyer, I get paid. I then pay taxes. I pay healthcare. I have to put into IRA, 401k, all that jazz. So for you, what a lot of fitness people are getting into is the monthly subscription because yeah. that's residual. Everyone, yeah. the, the biggest thing that Amazon did was prime because right. they know that 150 or 200 million or whatever their subscriber base is, is going to give them $100 a month. It was the most brilliant thing they could have done because yeah. that's their subscription model. Mm-hmm. And I would recommend that for everyone because that's residual income guaranteed. You know, Absolutely. It's not yeah. like you do a workout, you get paid for it, you have to do another workout, you have to get paid for it. You right. know? So I said, I have to move into a residual income in the future. Okay, mm-hmm. not right now. Okay, so that's wealth. Health-wise, mm-hmm. okay. I go to bed at eight o'clock, seven thirty some nights. Um, you know, I want to eliminate or not even maybe drink once every two weeks. Okay. Sure. So my spouse, so I'm essentially designing not only my life, but who I'm looking for relationship wise, because she has to jive with an early bedtime. And unfortunately, the girls that I have been dating are like, let's date at eight o'clock. Then we're mm-hmm. drinking. I get home at 10. Then I'm hungover. I don't work out. My sales calls suck. Then I'm cranky. Then my pitch sucks in the afternoon the next day. And then it's just going this way. <laughs> Got so it. So I Got now, it. I don't really filter, but I just say, this is the lifestyle that I live. Is it yeah. cool with you? And yeah. if the girl's okay with that, you know, so uh, that's wealth relationship. And then health is, uh, you know, probably meet once every two months, you know, sure. I, am I going to eliminate it? I don't know. I'm not yeah. staunch on anything. Uh, but I do do a pretty much plant-based. I don't drink. Uh, I, I actually don't drink any soda, uh, mm-hmm. from a little kid, you know, yeah. I'm just a little allergic to carb- carbonation. Uh, okay. so that's good. You know? Got it. Got uh, it. <laughs> yeah. I hope, listen, dude, is- li- listen, guys, I hope you guys are all taking notes. I could, cause this is, I, I love it. I love it, man. This is, this is great. This is uh Charles, Charles is the pinnacle of health right now. And I'm even, I'm even admiring you right now. Cause I, I, I don't do all of those things for sure. And I think it is, it is admirable. Right. And I think it's, it's also, you, you made a point that you didn't, you haven't always done this, right. You've, you've worked no. up to this, right. You've worked no. up to this, this over time. Uh, and I think what I, what I would like to touch on is, um, oh yeah, we're good on time. Um, whenever you, so you got into real estate and things like that, and you have your own company, correct? Did you, yeah. did you do that, uh, uh, shortly after this Tony Robbins seminar, or was this later on kind of down the road? And then you, you gradually built up to that doing your own thing. Yeah. So I, I, you know, anyone that gets into anything, I always say have at least maybe not a direct mentor, but someone you follow it could be virtually, it could be online. It could be yeah. someone that you look up to, which is, and it could be looked up to not everything. You know, yeah. that's the thing is that if I say Grant Cardone, people are like, he's too brash. I'm like, but he has residual income. He has a great relationship with his kids. His mm-hmm. wife is on board, supports him. Yes. Like, yes. I, yeah. listen, of course there's things about him. I just told you something about Tony Robbins that I don't like. It's yeah. like, and there's people things that they're not going to like about me, but it's like, take that one tidbit, Absolutely. you know? It, so I, I personally, uh, look at it. At, I, I forgot the question. I was, I was about to go on a rampage, but no, it's all good. I was just trying, I was just trying to figure out how you got into your own company and things uh, and how you got into oh, the, your yeah. own, yeah, your own real estate company. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I went into real estate, uh, downtown small firm mm-hmm. and in real estate, it was 2009 hustling. You know, there's, there's a guy that was on the million dollar listing show and, you know, we used to make fun of him all the time. Uh, he's not on the show anymore, but he was, uh, yeah. Luis Ortiz. I don't know if anyone knows the show, but you know, right. we used to rip on him all the time, but he was a hustler. Uh, and he had long hair at the time and everything else. But at that time I noticed that rentals was the only thing I was being taught. So what I was saying was I was being taught something that wasn't the ideal path, 
but that's all I knew. It was kind of mm-hmm. like, you don't know what you don't know. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go down this because this person who I look up to that was maybe successful for one or two years, who's now my manager, which is crazy. You know, some right. people, you know, have, you know, one success and now they go their whole career. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. David Goggins talks about this all the time. It's like, okay, what about now? You yeah. Know? yeah. I, I'm glad you were successful as an athlete or you won the Heisman, but what about now? Mm. You know, David Goggins never settled. And it's, yeah. you could go down that, that path of never settling, which, you know, is a little obsessive, but he right now is on a great path. He, 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 he you know, I, I, I Again, love the take, guy. You just, yeah, Goggins, the guy, I mean, yeah, of course, can't hurt me. That book is amazing. Or can't hurt, touch yeah. me, can't hurt me, something, can't, yeah. Can't hurt me. Can't hurt you can't me. Can't touch yet. him either. I, Again, I've seen him a couple of times. Yeah. That too. Again, taking like you said, taking bits and pieces. Like taking that. Yeah. Sometimes you need that obsessive Goggins mentality of just like, hey, dude, sack the fuck up. Stop. Like just be tougher. Be tougher. Like grind it out and it's just and again what's next like okay that's great you can you can celebrate that small victory but okay what's next like keep keep coming back for more and sometimes you need that militant coach you need that goggins in your head 100 you yeah. know what i'm saying but then I you listened, made, yeah 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 go ahead i listened for 20 i i literally listened to that 20 times oh His really book while because i never liked running and um and my coach for triathlon was like well there's a whole one third of this that you have to run. And Oh, by the way, it's when you're exhausted, the sun is at high noon. It's the last part of the triathlon. So you're going to have to start liking this. So it, it was on repeat. And all I kept on hearing was stop sitting in your feelings because your feelings are not what are best for you. And mm-hmm. right now we're only sitting in our feelings because everything's so easy. You can mm-hmm. literally, I can literally survive here without ever leaving i can Mm -hmm. get really good at gaming i can have an online business what about food charles i can get that delivered i can Mm -hmm. get water delivered i don't even have to work out i could be a fat ass Mm -hmm. and that's the thing is that you there is no go out to the fields go get fire or chop down a tree to get wood to there is no physical labor anymore there is no like you have to do this or you're working on the farm for your parents or you have to get into your dad's business because he's a locksmith or iron Mm -hmm. worker or something like that like you can be lazy so we get into this cyclical thing which i was sort of getting into and the story behind that which which is actually really good and and maybe your listeners would jive with it go for it last year end of 2018 uh going into the beginning of 2019 everyone sets these goals and i'm gonna be i'm gonna lose 50 pounds have 50 million and data a 50 out of 10 you know <laughs> right, everyone right. has these monumental goals yet they don't know the atomic habits that go mm-hmm. behind it so mm-hmm. i would recommend james clear and reading that book because that transformed my my life but mm. i was at such a comfortable life I had, my money was fine. My business mm-hmm. was fine. Mm-hmm. My body was fine. Mm-hmm. My, you know, everything was fine. You know, Mel Robbins has a great TED talk out there and a great, well, the book is all right, but it's called the five second rule. Uh, mm. Just watch her TED talk. And she goes, the biggest four letter word in society is I'm fine. I'm fine. Mm, yeah. But that's not making you happy. Right. I'm fine waking up hungover. I'm fine with my non-sex relationship that I'm having. It's a roommate, but we're married. Yeah. I'm fine with my $20,000 job. And what David Goggins, and so I reached that point and I was fine. And then I saw a documentary on uh, YouTube called Iron Mind, Iron Mm. Mind. And this guy who has a, a podcast out there, called um uh london real london real oh, is pretty yeah pretty famous. i know london real yeah. yeah yeah so he got contracted to do this documentary or he did this documentary with this guy in new york who is uh a guy that was on drugs and in and out of prison and they worked together and they they actually noticed the number one thing they both needed to break down was their barriers within their mind mm. and when i saw that i said holy shit that's my life right yeah. now like everything yeah. is fine but uh, my barrier right now is not physical it's not emotional it's not it's mental and that's when i said you know i'm gonna become a triathlete i didn't know how i haven't swam i hated running but david goggins said i don't care what you feel like you mm. know everyone feels fine he yeah. goes 
you know, go with what's best, go with mm. the logic. And it's hard, but once, as you said, is progress is happiness, progress mm-hmm. is momentum, progress mm. is the, the compound effect by Darren Hardy, great book, or Slight yeah. Edge by Jeff Olson. They both, you know, it's the compound effect. You get a penny, two pennies, four, eight, you know, it's yeah. not much, but by the end of the month, it's the same thing. So, yeah. uh, a lot of people are sitting in a fine. Mm-hmm. And what David Goggins is just shake your head and be like, you're not, you have to admit that. Um, so yeah, that, yeah that's man. where I was at. And that's what pushes me is that I, I, once I hit a plateau, I get this weird feeling and, and, mm. and, you know, I'll pass it back to you in a second is, uh, there's this guy, um, Travis Pastrana, who's a, yeah. uh, skateboarder. You know, he has, uh, yeah, he, biker Moto X. Yes. Yeah, Moto X and everything else. So he has something Nitro Circus and you know he's very successful. Yeah. And he had an interview and I was obsessed with this guy because he, he first wanted to do a double flip, a double backflip, and then like first thing to do pretty much everything, like right. within Moto X. Mm-hmm. And he he had an interview and he said they asked him, How do you keep on pushing? How do you have no fear? And like if I make a cold call, nothing happens, they hang up. If he fucks up, he could die or be paralyzed. Yeah. You know, it's like that's Literally. a real fear. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. a real fear. Making a cold call is not, it's a fear, but so sure. he said something interesting. He said he actually has an aversion, a physical and emotional aversion to safety and mm. being comfortable. He actually said to being comfortable. Mm. And that didn't make any sense until about, you know, Last year, when I heard David Goggins, I said, that's what I went through is I, I was getting sick and I, not sick, but I was getting like anxiety because I was fine. I was yes. too comfortable. Yes. Uh, so I needed a challenge. Yeah. So that's what I'm chasing is I just don't like being yeah. comfortable. I love that. You know? I love that. And you have to, you have to continually move that bar and move that standard of, of what, what your comfortable is. Cause it's all relative, right? You're comfortable right now, you know, could be, uh, detrimental in a few years or something. You know what I'm saying? Making sure that you're oh, progressing yeah. over time. Um, that's great, man. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, and as we, as we wrap up here, I think it would be best to maybe, um, I know since you are, you do, you do love books. I know a lot of my readers or a lot of my uh, listeners and things, they like books as well. Uh, what I'm trying to get some practical takeaways here. Like what would you, what advice would you give to the listener? Maybe a book to start with, or maybe a habit to start with. Uh, what, what would you think that they could take away from this talk? So I would say two years ago when I first started on the path was food and mm. your listeners are probably fine with that. But for mm-hmm. me, that was basic. You yeah. know, learning what sugar does and you have visceral fat and people, you know, there's this, I think it was a Stanford, um, I, I think he was out of Stanford, but he said, they said, what's the number one metric? And people think it's BMI and obviously there's a lot behind BMI, but he said the number one metric is your waist to height ratio. Mm-hmm. And they, he, he can literally tell when you will probably have some kind of stroke, heart attack when you might die based because he knows that your organs are now adding on a protective layer, which is from inflammation, from drinking or too much meat or too Mm -hmm. much sugar, you know, or stress or anxiety. And then your organs build up this protective layer, which is good. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's not good because of something you're doing to it. Yeah. Uh, So I was eating too much sugar. Mm. I cleared up acne. I cleared up my yellow teeth. I cleared up sugar rushes. I cleared mm-hmm. up uh, crashes in the afternoon. I cleared up uh, the 2 p.m. where people say, I'm bored. I need to get coffee. I need to get sugar. So that was the first thing. So I said, okay, sugar. But then it, it was like, what What do the greens do for you? So, you know, mm. Brain Grain, which is uh, a great book. Mm. And Brain Grain talks about, uh, gluten, which is Greek for glue, and that obviously cannot be processed by the body. So glue, gluten, br- you know, any kind of bread or carbs, you know, unhealthy sure. carbs. Sure. Same thing with unhealthy fats. You know, avocados sure. are good. Uh, beans are good. You know, peanuts, any kind of nuts are good. So I started with food. Then I moved yeah. out of hydration. I then started looking up, obviously, not only the different types of water, mm-hmm. you know, obviously I say different water. 
I said the New York <laughs> the, accent. The New York Water. accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Dasani, it's not good. It's it's on the pH scale. It's like minus. It's like six or five. Mm. You know, the best one is Fiji. I think that's a ten. You know, mm-hmm. so I started testing the water. You know, New York City out of the faucet is actually pretty good. It's right around, but then there's too much phosphate. Uh, yeah, not phosphate. Uh, it might be phosphate. What what is it? Fluoride. Fluoride. Too much yeah. fluoride. Got it. So I said, okay, you know, so now I have Poland Spring delivered. You know, so I then I moved on to stress. Stress is the worst thing that you could do for your body at any time. Mm-hmm. Uh, the easiest way is you could look at how often you get a haircut, how often you cut your nails. The reason being is that when you have stress, your body says, what are the essentials that I need to do right now? Because I'm in a flight or flight or fight mm-hmm. or flight. Mm-hmm. And the growing your hair in your, your nails, that's not an essential to survival. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'll give you an example. I was on, on a date and this girl, I said, oh, you cut your hair uh, since I saw her. So I saw her in November. Then I saw her in January. And she goes, no, I just haven't gotten a haircut. And I was like, are you like, is anything going on? She goes, yeah, I'm stressed out of my job. And I'm like, that's a perfect example of something you read. And mm. now you understand that it's in, it's real. It's in real. practical. You've yeah. seen someone, their hair didn't grow because they're stressed out. Obviously sure. it goes way deeper than that. Sure. Um, it's, it's literally zero, mm-hmm. but that's all leading up to the number one book that I just read by Matthew Walker. I just oh, yeah. posted about it. Um, sleep is the number one thing that I not only put away, but are being told by Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, I know people say sleep eight hours, but sleep faster. So it's only six. Mm. Gary Vaynerchuk, hustle. I only need four hours of sleep. It's being shoved down her throat. When in fact, if you look at it logically, there's no reason that we should sleep. There's mm-hmm. no reason because right. we're not foraging for food. I'm saying back in the day, you know, yeah, sure, think sure. now has always what it, no, no. Right, so right. foraging for food, I'm not procreating. Uh, I'm not getting water. And at the worst, I could be attacked. Yeah. By not only tribes, but other animals. So why the hell did evolution, mother nature say sleep was important? Mm. Obviously it's needed. And then the book literally curtails, you know, light rem, rem, uh, it goes all the way down, and it, yeah. each process is actually necessary. So the first process is storing memory. The last, pro- or actually the first process, yeah, storing memory, and then the last process is actually cleaning out the brain. But sleep would be the number one thing. So yep. um, I'll just go down practical tips. Is that I'm not on my, I leave my cell phone at work. Um, I don't drink two hours before I go to bed. I don't drink too much water, which would wake you up in the middle of the night, and then that wakes you up from sleep. Uh, go to bed and wake up at the same time. Yep. Uh, any kind of blue light really messes you up. Don't have your cell phone by bed, by your bed at all. It should not be your alarm. Get an actual digital alarm. Uh, don't have it, have it facing upside down so you don't know what time it is. Right. Uh, get an eye mask. Don't have any noise. So they, there's practical tips. Um, I In the back of the book, I took a picture. If you want the 12 practical tips, there's literally, you don't even have to read the I know book. You, but you the made book, an IG post about it. It was really good. I liked it. The last two pages literally go over the 12 practical tips, but the entire book shows why stre- um, uh, sleep leads to Alzheimer's because there is uh, an amygdaloid, I, I think that's what it's called, amygdaloid plaque that goes onto your brain that can't be flushed out at night. That plaque leads to Alzheimer's. Then that leads to potentially stroke and then, um, you know, dementia. It eats away at your brain. It just makes sense. You yeah. Know? And we're absolutely. doing it. We're, we're doing a lot of it wrong. You know, yeah. just yeah. love yourself. Well, yeah. You know. Uh, I know. know. No, that, that I think it's yeah. You've you've got to have the balance of sure you can you, you know can body ex- positivity ex- takes you too far when you're 45 and you can't pick up your kids or 55 and you have your first stroke. You know, it's yeah. not. Yeah, no, we've, it's, we've got to, I think we've got to accept ourselves through action, through, uh, like the, the, the path that we are on. And I think it's, it's part of being and becoming right. It's, it's being accepting. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I, I love myself, but also I love myself enough to make these changes, these positive changes to my health, uh, objectively. Right. Honestly, the, the biggest high is going and doing a great workout. You yeah, know? it really is. It absolutely you, you is. just yeah it's a natural euphoric you don't need any drugs or pills to be taken 
you know yeah, so no, that's i agree it, it feels good when you like what you you know how you look but i agree you know. man i 100 yeah. and that the, yeah matthew walker why we sleep it's a it's a great book the re- it's, i was out of the last 10 years it's probably the most pivotal book i love that it I've read i love it of, i you know I put I I was scrolling through my phone because I was trying to make sure I got the title. I wrote a blog post actually about sleep. It's called Sleep the oh, Most Boring. It's called Sleep the Most Boring and Effective Fitness Tip Ever, <laughs> and that's it's basically By it far. because it is super boring, but also the research is very very clear about how effective it is. Um, that what they say is that people say practice makes perfect, but it's actually practice with sleep makes perfect because they they said that if you can't actually remember what you're doing, this is in baseball, this is in any, any kind of sport is that your body gets the reflexes, not only, you know, in the muscles, but in the brain when it stores it and it becomes an unconscious activity, you know, Mm -hmm. baseball player, how do you hit a 98 mile an hour fastball? It's because it's an unconscious, how do you see the seams of the ball and make Mm -hmm. a decision, right? You know, within 0.25 seconds. And the reason being is that they've added sleep. It's now a memory. And then you're stacking those memories. So Oh yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and yeah. then obviously your your post yeah. probably talks about breaking down, building back muscle up, which I yeah. noticed in uh, being a triathlete is that I've now tracked my um, heart rate variability. I've tracked, you know, uh, sure, pretty much everything. You know, what's my resting heart rate? Is it too high? Is it too low? Um, you know, it's yeah, yeah. There's in, metrics that in the study in the studies that that I, I went over in this, and it was it was basically they had two different groups, and the the one with um, uh, the one that actually had more sleep and better quality sleep, um, as they were, were dieting down, they retained much more muscle mass and also lost more fat mass as the other group who was more sleep deprived. They actually lost the, I think they lost some, some fat, but not as much, but they also lost a lot more muscle mass as well, yes. which is very they interesting. They actually added that. What was the reason? Do you remember the reason it's, it's behind it? I think the sleep was the, the, the ultimate indicator. It was just, it, I don't know what the, the mechanisms are in the body that, that causes it to do that. It could be, um, uh, you know, reduced output in the gym or something like, I don't know what the, the actual factors were that came into play, yeah. but it was, it was pretty, it was pretty clear that I think the sample wasn't huge or anything, but the studies were very compelling saying that having more sleep is definitely more beneficial to, to holding on and possibly building additional muscle mass whenever you are. Yeah dieting down. So they actually um, talk about that in the book and they, they, for any of the people that says, Oh, it's a great study. He actually in the book talks about the, what actually happened sure. that caused it. So you're like, Oh, okay. That makes mm, sense. Yes. You know? So when I say sleep leads to dementia, you're like, Oh, okay. But I'm like, it, it causes, you know, amygdaloid plaque that stays mm-hmm. there. Can't be flushed out. Then you add more of that, that eats away at the brain. That's what makes sense because you can then say, oh my God, you know, right. I need to sleep to, to flush that out, which happens yes. every single night. So, yes. uh, but that, I, that study was in there and, and it was shocking to me. I would think that fat would be the first thing that yeah. the body would eat away at, but it was yeah. muscle. Yeah. It's interesting. It's very yeah. interesting, man. Well, Charles, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. This was, this was wonderful, man. I, I, I appreciate it. I hope you Absolutely. hope you enjoyed it as well. Um, yeah. actually my, my girlfriend lives in New York. She's actually here with me now. Um, but she, she lives in the East village. Um, and, oh, we yeah. will, and I'll be moving up there. Uh, hopefully given the current situation or whatever, we'll be moving up. I'll be moving up there with her. Um, I think around September, beginning of September ish. Nice. So we're, we're going to be looking for an apartment and stuff like that. So yeah, maybe hitting you up uh, later on down the road and and, and maybe getting some advice or, or some help or yeah. something like that. Um, yeah. So yeah, man, I I, I where appreciate are you right you. now? Uh, so where she so she's in law school at Cardozo Law in uh, New York, and so yeah. she's in her first semester there. But we whenever she decided to go to Cardozo, we we didn't know she had gotten in yet. And so we thought she was staying here to go to the University of Kentucky. And I had just yep. signed my lease to this apartment that I'm in right now. Right. Mm-hmm. And so she but then she found out she got into Cardozo in New York and she was like, OK, I'm, I'm going to go to Cardozo. I'll stay there for a year by myself. You stay here for a year by yourself. So I've been here. And then um, now this lease is about to run up and I'm going to move up to New York and, and, nice. and be with her because she's still got a few more you years ready? in law school. I, you know <laughs> what, man? I, I came from a, I came from a, a 20,000 people city here in Kentucky. And uh, it's it's I've been to New York probably like 
seven or eight times now. So I'm more, I'm more acquainted with it. It, it was much more daunting at first. Yeah. Trust me. It was, it was, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is way oh, too yeah. much. It was overwhelming, yeah. but now I'm, yeah. I'm starting to become more comfortable with it. I've got some friends up there, other fitness coaches and stuff like that. So I'm excited, man. Brandon I'm definitely Carter. nervous. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I know who Brandon Carter yeah. is, but we're not, yeah. we're not buddies, but I got a few other, a few other friends up there who, who probably yeah, know him a little there. bit better. Yeah. Brandon's yeah, great. Or, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say I was in Louisville for the um, for the uh, Ironman last year. Yeah, it's Beautiful about an hour. From, it's about an hour from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah here in it. Lexington. Loved yep. It. Yeah, absolutely. Very man. nice. So, so I'll be I'll be in touch later on for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, but cool. Okay, do you want to just tell people where they can find you and find out more about? Yeah, you? I would say the only two places that may, probably the most value is going to be on YouTube if you care about books because that's it's personal development, but I, I pretty much just do book reviews. So in the next 20 days, I'm going to be putting out or next 30 days, I'm going to be putting out 20 book reviews. And I think that's going to be mainly the content on my uh, YouTube channel is going to be book reviews. So you don't have to read the book or you choose sure. if this is going to be a book for you, like designing your life is good for someone that's younger. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously on Instagram, which, you know, has been a wild ride so far. You know, with uh, everyone coming in from the podcast and their, their inside jokes and everything. It's so just read through the comments; it's great. Yeah, Charles it's Botenston, just hit me up and yeah, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll have some property tours too on my Good. Instagram, so you can Good. see some nice, beautiful homes in New York City that are yeah. way overpriced compared to the rest of the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's all good. I'm 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 excited. Yeah, I'll make sure to uh, uh, I'll include all those links, everything in the description, um, and. Uh, yeah, man. I, again, I appreciate you coming on. appreciate Absolutely. you taking your time. This was great. Um, yeah. and we'll, we'll have to do it again sometime in the future. Absolutely, buddy. All right. Enjoy. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, bro.